Yeah, how are you today? We appreciate you joining us. Give me a hell yeah! Fate destroyed lead singer Francesca Destruct. Thank you so much for doing this. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. I am okay. I am, uh... It's been a really long day. Worked all day and, uh, have some guests in town. So I'm just enjoying, enjoying my Tuesday. How are you, how are you doing today? I am doing excellent. Uh, if you could, please... I well, Please. Like, it's like super dark. Give me just a second. Oh, no worries. Hell yeah. Let's go. Hey, how was, uh, first off, how was the tour with Adrian and Assuming We Survive? That looked awesome. Um, it was amazing. I mean, Adrian is like basically my family now. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a great guy. He's really good. He's really, he's really good people. It was, they were super nice. Everyone in Assuming We Survive is amazing and I think honestly, like the tour with them was definitely, I mean, them being on the tour was the best part of the whole experience for sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. That was like your first major, major tour, I, I believe. Is that correct? As Fate Destroyed, yes. Now, like me on a personal level, I've done a lot of touring, but in terms of the band, that was the first, it was our first tour ever and um, our first national tour. And, uh, I don't know, it was a really good experience because we finally got to go out on the road and, uh, play our new EP. We released an EP right before we left. And, uh, yeah, so that was, that was a good part of it. We got to, like, really finally get our music out there into, like, the world instead of just sitting at home playing it, uh, on a computer, so. I totally feel you. What, what is, what is one thing you learned on tour that you would give advice to someone that has like a band that has like, Oh, this is our first major tour. Well, you need to know this. Love's parking lots are your ultimate savior. Right. So like we were not, we are not a big enough band to be touring like in a bus. So we were touring in like this E350, which is like a passenger van. So one of those big vans that you see that have like the, all of the passenger seats, um, and many moons ago, it used to be you used to be able to park at Walmart parking lots free, um, and you could stay there overnight. And I guess that was cool. But what we really learned was that the Love's truck stops and Pilots as a secondary option are way better because number one, you can park there all night and it's not an issue. And then number two, um, I didn't know that. they have showers. So since we were in a van and it was, we were like really roughing it, being able to park somewhere that we could wake up and take a shower and have coffee and um, have 24 access, seven access to bathrooms was like amazing. So I guess like the old way of doing it is Walmart parking lots with any new band that's out on the road. I really highly suggest stop at Love's parking lots. They're like the ultimate savior. Great advice. Great advice for sure. I would say what, what would you say is the hardest song to perform on, on your set list every night? Um, for me or for my band? Because those are two very different answers. I would say bo <laughs> both questions then. Both questions. Um, I think for me, so there's actually, actually the need that we kill for used to be in our set and we took it out, um, from the live set. And that's for me as a vocalist, it's difficult because the register is super high. And since part of my vocal style is being able to transition really quickly between the guttural vocals and the higher pitch screaming um, or like the screaming in general. By the time we get to that song, especially where it is, it's really difficult for me. So I struggle with that. Um, but in the current set list, I think the hollow, no, let's crash. We didn't put the hollow in the set list. I think let's crash is the hardest simply because it actually has like some rap parts in it. And those parts can be um, a little bit difficult for me to uh accomplish live but we're able to do it so i think that that's probably the answer probably let's crash um for the bands i don't know i feel like everyone in my band is kind of like a pro so they definitely um they don't really have issues as much as i have issues which maybe is something i should look at but <laughs> although although I, I although i don't think he's i don't think he's in the band anymore what was it like working with max for a little while of, of Max was never he was my ex-boyfriend let's not talk about that I apologize I did not know that I'm sorry uh let's go ahead and play let's crash I honestly did not know that 
<laughs> I thought after Nate, Max joined. Sorry. Yeah. He, he filled in for a show when we first started before I had a bass player, and he wrote some songs with us. That's it. Okay. Well. So this, this video that he's shown right now is by this amazing guy named Sean Brandon. Um, he We basically reached out to him. We knew we were going to be in Tampa, and he shot us at Blue Ridge, I think. Oh, no, Rebel Rock. No, it was Blue Ridge. It was Blue Ridge. I don't remember. One of the, one of the big festivals that we did. And we were so impressed by his work. And so when we had the opportunity to ask him to come out to a show and uh, play in it, um, or not play it, but to, to do a live music video, we were so excited. And honestly, it was like pretty early in the tour, which is kind of a weird thing. I kind of wish we would have been able to see him later because I don't know how to explain this to people who've never been on tour before, but the first two shows are basically like a dress rehearsal, right? So we're spending our time kind of getting in the groove with each other. And even though we've all played a ton of shows together, actually playing like in a tour setting is very different in a strange way. So, um, but yeah, so the video we're about to play was shot by Sean Brady Media. He's super amazing. And we were really privileged to be able to have him come out and shoot our show. And the footage is live from our show at the Brass Mug in Tampa. What was it like playing that festival in, in Tampa? Uh, as, as far as like the size of the crowd being larger than normal, it's got to be amazing feeling to, to see the crowd's reaction. Oh, so, oh, definitely. So when we watched... Um, so we have really good friends in this band called uh, Dying Oath. They are amazing. My friend Mindy, she's a lead singer. And when we, so we got there early and we got to sit, sit like right behind where the stage, we parked there basically. And um, we saw another band, they played much earlier than we did. And I think the moment we all realized that we were about to play for like a thousand or more people, we all just kind of like hugged each other and cried like, you know, anything to do with bands is like a culmination of hard work and effort and sacrifice. And, you know, you spend all these time, all this time and all this money with all these people and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing. And, you know, especially when you're first starting out, you're playing to 20 people, 30 people, 40 people. And sometimes you kind of want to give up. But then you have moments like that where you look out into a crowd and it's just an endless sea of people and people are circle pitting and people are moshing and people are, even if they don't know who you are, <laughs> people heard my voice and moved across the field to come and watch us. And like, in that moment, I, I mean, I already knew to a certain extent that this is what I needed to do with my life. But I think in that moment, it was absolute confirmation that there is nothing else in this world that any of us could do. Like, this is what we were made to do and we're going to do it. So it was a life changing experience. Rebel Rock was cool. It was really sad that, I mean, I'm glad we got to play it because obviously the next day it got canceled. Um, and so that was weird. But um, Rebel Rock was was still a cool experience. Definitely not the same amount of people and not the same crowd. But anytime we have the opportunity to play a major festival, like we definitely want to do that because festivals are where it's at, man. You know, playing to, playing to a crowd of 100, 200 people is one thing, but playing to a crowd of over a thousand people is a whole other thing entirely. <laughs> Completely different animal. I, I totally Give me agree. A hell yeah. Really quick before we play uh, Let's Crash, we have a chat question coming in. What other colors of hair do you prefer besides the half blonde, half blue? What other what? Colors do you do for your hair? It's a chat question. Oh, um, I. I have done pretty much only white and black in these two colors. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just, I feel like blue is like, I feel like blue is my color. It suits me. I like the cool tone and I feel it complements my olive skin well. So what other colors do I like? Any color of the rainbow, really. I'm really partial to cooler tones, but obviously I like a little bit of red. So <laughs> really anything, to be honest. Hell yeah. Let's crash. Because, you know, what, what, what we have tried to do with this new sound is really try to toe the line between mixing our older influences, which have like the kind of kind of bigger open singing choruses, but like the breakdown in Let's Crash is like it's dirt nasty. <laughs> and um, I think although it's not one of our heavier songs, it's more it's one of the more fun to play live because it has like a really nice groove element to it and it's one of those things where, like, you hear it and it makes you kind of want to bop around and move some. And, like, I don't know. I feel like that's important, right? 
And I think it's really interesting how some songs, like that song in particular, isn't one that I would necessarily like put into my headphones and listen to while I was like driving around, but it does translate super well live. And other songs like uh, Crave or This Crown, they sound really great in recording, but then when we play them live, people just like kind of stare up at us. I don't know. I think that's a weird thing that like bands don't talk about a lot is like how some songs translate better live and some songs translate better totally. in a studio recording. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Yeah. I, I used to be in a bunch of different bands myself and I'd be like, this one, this one's it. This, we got to save this one for the end. And people are rocking out and then you play that one last song and they're like, that wasn't the it. You gotta, you gotta switch it up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, it's uh, funny because... no, go you go, ahead. you go, you go. I'm sorry. Uh, it's funny because, you know, when we released the album and we put out this crown as a single, we even like went so far as to do a video for it. But every time we played it live, we were all just like, we were bored. The crowd was bored. Everyone was bored. And I was like, man, like this seemed like such a good song. And it's not necessarily that it's a bad song. Like it's not a bad song. It's just not a great song to play live. It just doesn't have that energy. You know what I mean? It doesn't have the thing that like makes people want to, I don't know, wall of death or whatever it is that kids are doing these days. I love it. <laughs> I've been involved in a couple of wall of deaths in my day. Hey, uh, are you going to color in your throat piece? I see this. Um, so not with color. So thank you. This is done by Danny Maldonado. It is a peony. Um, and it matches the, I'm not going to do anything explicit, but I do have a cool under chest tattoo right there that also has peonies. Cool. So it's kind of like a matching theme. And um, so I'm going to get it shaded in, but not colored in. All of my tattoos, I don't know if you can see, are black and white. Black what was that? Uh, Leatherface leather face right here on on your... Oh, it's not. Why should we fix that? It, it, on it's quick not, glance. On quick... Oh. It's definitely, it's definitely Edgar Allan Poe. You're right. Now that I see it, that angle, yeah. But he's like dying. Okay, I get it. I get it. Hell yeah. I, you did it so fast, I couldn't tell, but... <laughs> on the inside of my arm, I have a raven. And it actually says, close the raven nevermore. So, like, the whole theme. <laughs> Makes sense. It's all tied in together. I love it. Hey, so, I don't know if you recall, but I have the Warp Tour pulled up in the background because uh, uh, at one time you had this gentleman named Mate in the band, and he once introduced me and you at Warp Tour many, many years ago. It was probably for a brief five minutes, but uh, we we met once at a Warp Tour. I don't remember which one. Probably the one right before COVID or the last the one last ever. One. It was the very last one. Yeah. It was the last one in California, yeah. Hell yeah. Are you down to review a, a couple bands with us? Sure. Cool. And then we do... Can we, like, put it in your headphones so I can, like, hear you better? Hold on one second. No worries. And we do a little trivia, too. No, if, you're, if, you're, if you're going to listen to music, then I want to listen to music. Hell My yeah. My eyelashes are so crooked right now, and I don't know what to do about it. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> you're good. Oh, no I'm worries. I am worried about it. I'm upset. Boom. And coming then... On coming on live... Uh, YouTube with my eyelashes all defuncated. See, you see, this is what's wrong with getting old. I can't see shit. Hold on. Crash and the Crappenders, who I'm going to play. and play a little ska for you. Can, can, can you hear me? Yes. You know, you want to hear something funny? It's actually really embarrassing, but I'm going to tell you anyway, even though I definitely shouldn't, and nobody make fun of me. In fact, actually, or you can make fun of me as much as you want. I don't care. So... Up until this tour... Okay, so let me give you some backstory. So, assuming we survive... They're all like punk OGs, right? Like, they're involved in that scene. They know about that scene. They're part of that scene. Even though they're very much, um, even though they're very much like, I don't know, pop, pop punk, like, the people in the band are punk OGs. Anyway, so the reason that I'm saying this is because uh, their TM slash merch person, his name is Scotty. We call him Scotty Ducati because he has a Ducati, which I want a Ducati. I don't have one. It's very upsetting. But Damn, he's on. a very um, high high paid uh, merch person, I would say. <laughs> he's paid well. He's paid well. So, right. So, I mean, that whole band's doing great. So, um, Anyway, so we were sitting backstage in a green room one time, and I was asking him about patches on his punk jacket, because I don't know shit about punk. I don't know anything about punk. That's not my scene. Never been my scene. We'll never pretend like it's my scene. I don't hate it. I just don't know anything about it, right? And um, so I, we were sitting backstage one time, and I was like, I've never heard ska music. And I was like, is it just punk with trumpets? <laughs> not <laughs> Punk with trumpets and trombones. And he was like, um, 
no. So that's <laughs> definitely not what it is. Kind of, but definitely not. So anyway, I was first introduced to ska and actually listened to my first ska band and on this last tour that we did with Assuming We Survive. So thank you, Scotty Ducati, for correcting my uh, incorrect uh, like assumptions about what ska music is. <laughs> that is funny. That's a funny story. It is a little bit more than that, but you kind of get the gist of it. Claire, because like, okay, so maybe people don't know this, but where I got my start in music was actually not as a singer. Um, I spent the predominant part of my career in my early career as a bass player, right? So that's how I got my endorsement with Schechter and EMG and Galleon Kruger. And I was like touring with all these big bands as a bass player. And that was like my shit. That's what I did. So what I like about Ska is that it's so bass riff heavy, even though it's like a very simplistic bass line. I love that they allow for that to like shine through the whole song. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. I like that. You let them walk a little bit. Let them walk a little bit. Yeah. So it's just a fun vibe. It's just a fun vibe for sure. What do you got? You got a... The claw is the law. The claw. It's funny. I had a seltzer earlier, but it wasn't the claw. That's what I had the other day. Uh, do you know your lethal... I mean, I'm sorry. You go. I, I was saying that they came out with a stronger version of White Claw. That's yes! 8% instead of 5. And I've, I've not found it yet. The Stater Brothers. Is honestly bullshit. Stater Brothers is where is I found Stater it. Stater Brothers? Yeah, they, they come in... I don't even in... know what that is. What is Stater Brothers? St you don't have Stater Brothers in LA? You're, you're in LA, right? Yeah. Uh, Stater Brothers is like the big ass grocery <laughs> store in Southern California, like like the chain of grocery stores. But anyway, if you find we a, have, we have, anyway, sorry, go ahead. Maybe at Walmart. I don't know. They might have it. But do you know anything about Lethal Weapon, starring Mel Gibson? The movie. The movie. We're gonna do a little movie trivia. I am the worst. You know who I need for this? Okay. So Chris in my band, right? Chris Kennedy. He, like, has this crazy, like, savant brain for movies. Like, you want to talk about somebody who can master Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon? <laughs> we tried for 30 days to fool him. We had other people try. We had everybody try. He was, like, connecting Kevin Bacon to, like, Shirley Temple. Just, like, ridiculous, ridiculous shit that you would never think is possible. And he can do it. So, anyway... I am a terrible movie buff. I am like one of those people who passively watches movies who like, I'll see it and I'm like, I like this movie. And then that's like the end of its existence in my mind. Whereas he's one of those people who like, he sees a movie and he can see everyone who was in it and then like knows who they all acted with and like what they started. I don't know. He's crazy. Anyway, you can give me movie trivia, but I'm going to be really bad at it, but we can do it anyway. It's funny. Chris was actually in the chat earlier, but uh, the movie trivia question I have for you is in all the Lethal Weapon films, what is Mel Gibson's character's name? I would not. I would not I would. I'll give chat a second. Frequent misconceptions. What do you think? So good. Out of New York. I love that. I would jam the shit out of that. That's so good. Hell yeah. For I'm into it. You know, like, I'm I'm so easy to please musically, honestly. I mean, what's weird is like, so I have this weird issue now in my life where since I make metal music, I almost never listen to it. And I think it's because like, whenever I listen to metal, I have this compulsion to dissect it, right? And when I hear, so like, when I listen to that, I'm already like, what atmosphere presets or like compact presets do they use for that synthesizer? Like what vocal effects, what's the delay, what's the decay or, or what amount on the reverb that they had in that clean section? Your production so, like, mind's going crazy. I can never like just listen to it. Right. I just want to know, I want to know about it. Um, because there's so much that I want to borrow from stuff like that. So I think that's like, it's weird because now I listen to like mostly like, trap metal and like soundcloud stuff and i know that's like uh boo whatever but it's like it's i can passively listen to it and not have to like freak out about how it's done but that was really good i like that a lot i'm gonna add that so we have a fade destroyed playlist um which is like fade destroyed favorites and um it's like you can find it on our spotify but it's like everything that everyone in the band is kind of like jamming right now like our top five favorite songs each or whatever but that's really cool i'm gonna add that to our playlist hell yeah frequent misconceptions uh so you, you, you mentioned you mentioned like trap metal yeah. is big in your life right now. Why why the song Death Signs? Like what was the writing process behind that? Like obviously oh, with the trap metal are you being ready to talk for an hour? Let's go. We're ready. <laughs> Hold on, I'm writing frequent misconceptions down because I actually really did dig that a lot. <laughs> cool, no worries. I'll play a little teaser of, of uh Death Signs real quick. 
Who car. Has beautiful cars. Yeah, who had the best who car in the whole video? Cars in that who had the best Not car? Not me, honestly. So the car that's next to mine in that video is called an RX. It's a it's a Mazda RX-7, and it's an FD body style. It is right-hand drive. It is imported. It is... When I tell you a masterpiece of So you a know car, your rides. You know your to, rides. I got to drive it in the canyons, and, like, it was like I got to touch God for a second. Like, when I tell you this thing just, like, was on rails in every turn, it just didn't matter. Like... I could go <laughs> I could go around any turn as hard as I wanted and then the sound of the rotary engine like just kill me. I just I want one so bad. It was so nice. So definitely not my car. And then we actually so a crazy thing in that video um okay, so let me back up a little bit for those of you who don't know. So like cars are my shit. That's like what I do. Um uh I don't have any great ones, but I do have some fun ones and um so I really wanted to include that in my music video because I, I feel like a lot of the music videos that we did previously, we sort of just like in everything that we did previous. Right. And part of the reason that trap metal started to like be part of what we were doing is when we did our last album. And even when we did a lot of things previous, we, our whole goal was like to get signed. Right. Like that's all we cared about. How, what do we do to make a record label notice us so that we can get signed? And so we like put ourselves in these boxes, right? Does it sound like a day to remember enough? Does this sound like motionless and wide enough? Does this sound like in this moment enough? And so I found like we were stifling ourselves by continuing to emulate these big bands. And like the problem with that is that it doesn't leave any room for innovation, right? So right. like even in our music videos, we were doing the same old and of you know whatever performance music videos. Like yeah, we added our own flavor. But again, it was just a band with instruments in a white room with cool lights playing. Like, it's been done a million times. There's nothing interesting or unique about it. I mean, to us, of course, right, because it's our music. But so, you know, we finished our last, we finished our album. And by the time we actually put it out, I hate, I, I won't say I hated the album. There are things about it that I like and songs about it that I like and songs about it that are on our playlist now or a set list. But it was very much not an album that we wrote for ourselves. We wrote it because we wanted to accomplish a specific goal, right? And so part of the reason that this music video is the way that it is, I mean, how often do you see like metal bands in like tuner cars, you know, and cars drifting and stuff like that? Like it's not very often, not. but that's like my life. That's really what I enjoy. That's the people I hang out with. Every person who owns a car in that music video is a friend of mine. That is a car friend that I spent time with that we've gone out to car meets on with, you know, it's like I wanted to actually just be like as authentically myself as I could be. And, you know, the predominant music that I listen to right now is a lot of like Scarlord and Omen 13 and Project and Kill Station and like Witch House 40K and all of these and we uh, <laughs> Ouija Mac and like all of these I wouldn't say underground, but. I mean, kind of underground, like all of these trap metal artists who are really blurring the lines between metal and rap. And, you know, we saw a re, re like a reemergence of that. Right. So like Limp Bizkit recently put out an album. I fucking loved it. I thought it was so good. Um, you know, I some bangers on it for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, I won't say it's a perfect album, but there are certainly songs on there that I'm like, this is like, this is fire as fuck, like, you know, and maybe that's because I'm old and it reminds me of growing up. But anyway, the point that I'm making is I feel like, you know, and this is like probably going to be really controversial, and I hope that <laughs> my band doesn't get mad at me for saying this and other people don't. Um, I just feel like music is changing, and the only way to stay in front of that and the only way to appeal to younger fans and the only way to reach a new audience is to not try to fit in the same boxes that people expect for you to fit in. Right. So, you know, everything that sounds like bring me to the horizon, everything that sounds like a day to remember everything that sounds like, I don't fucking know, like all of those bands, it's already been done. Right. But how many female fronted trap metal bands are there out there that you know of really? Like I'm not under I'm two or one. three, so under two or three. What I'm saying is, there are just there's not that many and i want to make music that i like and we're going to keep experimenting and so right now we're working on a on a new ep um we're about to try to work with some really big name producers and you know i think the ep the two-tone hearts ep was a lot about just like trying to find our sound and finding what was comfortable for us and 
you know, it's not, even though that's music that I listen to, it's not music that everyone in my band listens to. So it was definitely like a learning process trying to incorporate elements of this new style without reverting back to what's comfortable, right? But growth and success and achievement comes from trying things that aren't comfortable. Definitely. So, I mean, we're all adapting and we're all trying new things. And, you know, we put out this EP and honestly, we were all really nervous about it because it's not what our fans expected. It's not anything like what we would usually put out. And it's not even, I don't know how to explain it. Other than Where We Lie, which is like the deathcore song that we put out that's on the end of the album, um, which was my response to being told, you know, if you want to be signed to a label, you need to make more poppy music. So my response was to write a death metal song or deathcore song with no cleans because fuck you. You're not going to tell me what to write. I'm not doing that. Like, I like no. that. Give me a hell um, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Hey, uh, so chat wants us to play a specific new metal, like trap metal kind of record for you yes. based on, based yes, on what yes, you just yes, said. Yes, I want to hear it. I feel like they've come up on my, on my, on my, uh, my Spotify curated playlist. Okay. Yeah. They're from Southern California too. I believe Pomona is where they're from. I think. Shit. They're from Pomona. Are we going to play a show together? Is this person in that band? Hit me up. Hell yeah. That would be a good, that would be a great show. I'll be there for sure. This is a Silas. Can you ask him if this is produced by Brian Spencer? Who's Brian Spencer? Who isn't Brian Spencer? Who isn't Brian Spencer? No. Uh, he, what? <laughs> he writes. He he writes and does a lot of production for like Scar Lord and a bunch of other. He's done stuff for Ghost Mane, but uh, that sounds like his work, like his production work. He has like a very specific style of beat that's like super cool. We're actually buying some stuff from him for this next EP that we're doing. Um, and then we have like, so there's this chick who she, I shouldn't say chick. That's a mean thing to say. Uh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> also that's fire. And I wrote that down and I'm going to contact that band and we're going to do something together because they fucking rule. Um, Hell yeah. so there's this Clearance woman, cruel. amazing woman. Uh, she, um, she goes by Lily YOTP and she did the beat for, uh, let's crash. And we're buying some beats from her. Her stuff is also super sick. She's like. I don't even know how to explain it. And I don't want to use like the basic trope of Marilyn Manson because that's super lame and like ugh, he's canceled anyway. But in terms of like being like a shock rock female artist who just like does not give a single fuck and she raps hard as fuck, like she's awesome. I like, I want to be like her when I grow up, even though she's probably like 22 and I'm definitely in my 30s. But that's fine. <laughs> say the, say the person that if you mind you again, spell it out one more time. You said Lou, Lou, what is it? Lili, so it's L E E L E E and Lili. then Y O T P. Lili Y O T P. Lili is all one word. Hey, Dave Davon's in the chat right now. Davon's in the chat from Asylus. If you wanted to repeat what you said about you guys gigging together, I'm fucking contacting you, and we're gonna do some shit together. We, I know everybody that you probably know, and probably some people you don't know, and we may know mutual people. Let's go. Let's throw a banger. Let's go. <laughs> Music comes full circle. Like, does that not remind you in some ways of like an updated Combi Christ? Does it not? Oh, yeah, a it, little like, bit. Yeah, for or, sure. Like Cyclone 9. It does. It has like the industrial fucking, it's like full circle. It drive like, it blows my mind. It how, blows my mind. I love it. How I, it just comes I full circle. It. I'm old enough now that shit's coming back around. Yeah. I love the fact that like Bruno Mars is doing the Anderson Pock Silk Sonic side project that has like that like <laughs> doo influence to kind of like bring that sense back into it. Um, Cause I'm, I'm a big R&B guy myself. So I love the, the classic sound coming back around. And we had one more, one more chat uh, recommendation for you. This band's called The World I Knew. I do not know where they're from. But this is I was not ready. I was not ready. Let's go. I love that this exists. I'm so happy that this exists. The <laughs> world The World I Knew is the name of the band. Oh shit, I'm on my phone right now. So my drummer Cameron, his last band was in like this fucking like trap beatdown band. I'm talking like punch your mom in the face, dirt nasty fucking trap metal. It was so I wish Damn, I could remember the son, name of it right where'd now. you find this? It was <laughs> Is so good. I was like, damn, I am like, I'm almost like, obviously. Yeah, I haven't heard the name Dirt Bounty Nasty us, in a hot minute, name. by the way. I haven't heard Dirt Nasty's name in a hot minute. I am old, okay? <laughs> I am fucking old. I am old. Leave me alone. I had plastic surgery today. It was great. I, I don't know on what, but I, I can't tell. 
And you recovered quickly. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> you recovered quickly. Hell yeah. Yeah! Right, Fran, what's the last song that you want us to play? From uh, from Fate. I fucking love that. From Fate? But it's not on YouTube. Oh yeah, you said Spotify. I apologize. You told me that. But you just have... I just want you to play like the very last bit of it. Because it's like... It's amazing. So it's called Where We Lie. It's in the Two-Tone Hearts EP. And it has like the least plays of anything on there. But honestly, like the last 30 seconds of this song are so... They're sick. They're All right. sick. I'm it's gonna just, play it. I'm gonna I make sure more, to play the last 30 seconds of it too. Where we lie, fate destroyed. You guys, if you're feeling it, please go on Spotify, hit the follow button, check out the two tone hard DP. <laughs> I haven't heard that bit. Now that is a name that hasn't been brought up in like a decade at minimum. It says dark. It says oh, dark kingdom records. Yeah. I thought I thought you said a band name. Um. So uh. Yeah. So. I don't know. Um, so basically, they uh, when I was in a band, Kuza, that was like really successful, uh, that metalcore band. So they did really well for us when we did that. And um, I, you know, we just did a distribution deal. So we're not like signed to a record label with them or anything. But I just wanted to replicate that kind of success um, in a market that I was unsure of. And um and it also uh, helped us get on that tour that we went on. Um, so that was cool. So, you know, I mean, the door is always open to new opportunities and we are taking them as they come. And we have a lot of like big, I'm not saying big things on the horizon because that's like the cheesiest, eh, most annoying thing any band can ever say. But um, we have gotten some interest for some from some major labels. And I'm hoping that, you know, by this time next year, we will be at a place that is... Um, uh, really advantageous to our success and will take us to new levels and will bring us to places that we want to be for sure. I can dig it. I can dig it. I, w I definitely want to hear the last part of it like you said. The... And that one was on the, the set list? Yeah, and it is the last song of the set list and it was actually my first time to be able to crowd surf while screaming and I know that that's another song that like maybe doesn't necessarily translate as well but like live with the 808 drops and like all of the 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 thickness of it with the synth it's just like i don't know man it's a vibe it's a whole vibe it makes everybody move it makes every it's like the first time we ever had mosh pits was really to that song and like it was really fun and the the, the the weird thing about that ep right is like it doesn't make sense like the ep as a whole isn't like specifically cohesive there's like trap metal stuff and like stuff that's it's like it, as a gradient right so the first song death signs is like sort of really poppy with some trap metal influences like a little bit kind of like in the breakdown and like just sort of the beat then <clears throat> the hollow is like slightly more rock with some trap and then false alarm or sorry or let's crash is like straight up trap metal and then where we lie is like deathcore and it's funny because it just falls along with that whole like we are going to play what we want to play in music that we like and write music that we like because that's what we like, and we're just gonna do that. So the, the so, label is like yeah, basically so it, it we like, we want this from you, and you were like, you know what? Is basically what yeah, you said I mean, to them. Yeah. So you know we had we had a, and what's very interesting is like once we changed the sound and started playing the music that we like and started, you know, trying to explore that. So like, I don't want to say like it's only the beginning, you know, it's not, but it is our first time ever trying to dive into playing that genre of music, and it's like a learning curve, right? with any fledgling idea, right? So, like, we found our sound initially before we started touring, before we started playing festivals and doing all that kind of stuff. It, it always takes any smaller, newer band, like, a time to f fall into their sound, right? You have to, like, experiment and emulate and see what really is who you are as a musician, right? What fits. And with this EP, it was kind of like us dipping our toes and in, in experimenting with do we like this? Is this something that we like? And then this next EP that we're putting out is really perfecting that and like working with big name producers and uh, finding ways to like up their, not like up the production value up the music quality. And now all of us have toured together. Now we've all written together as a, as a unit. I mean, and that really changes everything. So it'll just come out, just flow uh, you know, right I, out when it's time, just flow right out and be natural. Yeah. And you know, I want to, I mean, my goal is always to get heavier. Like, 
you know, I think that that was something that I really resented about the album that we put out is like, there are really heavy breakdowns and even with the EP, but when I do listen to metal, I listen to stuff like, Oh God, I can't say that. I will. I listen to stuff like dealer and knock loose and alpha wolf. And like, I like stuff that makes your stomach hurt. Like that's my shit. I like it. And, you know, I obviously have not made music like that yet, but I want to. So <laughs> it's a work in progress, you know? <laughs> you got it. You got it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Francesca of Fate Destroyed. I appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much for, for hanging out for a little uh, while. Thank you. I'm, so, I'm sorry we had a hard time connecting, but I'm glad that we figured it out. I'm, I'm glad we figured it out, too. Cool. You were absolutely awesome. Guys, please, if you haven't already, go on Spotify. Check out the Two Tone Hearts EP especially if you like trap metal or deathcore. Check out that last song, Where We Lie. Lots of bangers, though, in general. Francesca of Fate Destroyed, I appreciate you. Cheers. Enjoy the rest of your day, and don't be a stranger. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good night. Bye. See ya.